My name is Daphne Keller. I direct the program on platform regulation at Stanford University in the US. I'm here to talk about the Digital Services Act, which is a law I've broadly supported since its inception. In fact, I published an op-ed in the US urging Congress to emulate parts of the DSA several years ago. But today I'm here to talk about the downsides of exporting the DSA's model to the rest of the world. European policymakers considering doing that have some major questions to consider, some of them practical, and some of them ethical and deeply intertwined with fundamental rights questions for internet users around the world. The practical consideration has to do with how adaptable the DSA is to existing legal systems in other countries. We should not make the mistake of comparing the DSA to the GDPR. That law built upon pre-existing data protection law that was broadly harmonized across over 100 countries, meaning that lawmakers and DPAs in places like Mexico and Argentina could make informed decisions and graft new laws onto well understood existing systems. The DSA, by contrast, is very novel. It's very experimental in ways that should be celebrated, but also probably not emulated until we know how well they actually work. Things like trusted flaggers or out of court dispute resolution bodies may be good models or not. Many parts of the DSA may turn out to be very good ideas that were not drafted quite right to serve their purposes which I think is already clearly the case with the Article 40 researcher access rules. The responsible course is to wait and see before urging other countries to copy and paste. Lastly, and most importantly, the DSA is fundamentally a law about how online information and expression will work for ordinary people. It empowers regulators in ways that many experts from the Global South have long said would be dangerous in the hands of their own governments. Powers that could readily be abused in ways that threaten internet users' fundamental rights range from the member state's trusted flagger designation to the commission's risk assessment and mitigation process. The DSA's drafters concluded that these powers were safe in the hands of Europe's own regulators and that potential abuses would be checked by legal constraints both inside and importantly outside of the DSA. Those same constraints may not exist or may exist only on paper in many legal systems. In short, I think the DSA is generally a good law. I'm excited to see how it plays out in the EU, but it is very new, very untested, and very consequential for fundamental rights in ways that may or may not be readily apparent and that may play out very differently in different countries. It has not reached a maturity level that makes export a responsible choice.